Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamazi here, and it's going to be my patch 11.0.5 and basically 11.0.7 Warlock Mythic Plus Guide. And we're going to be covering Destro, Demo and Affliction, Talent Builds, and some rotations, as well as answering some questions about what is good, what is not as good, why some things are being played in certain spots, and just general questions along the way that you might have about every spec of Warlock in the current state of Mythic Plus. Now, if you guys want any weak warriors, add-ons or profiles, links to Twitch, Discord and website up here, as well as down below in the description. We can get them all for free. And at the same time, the website does have these talent builds on them. It's always up to date talent builds for M plus and all that. So if you would like to look at that or just, you know, bookmark it or whatever, uh, yeah, feel free to do so. I also want to mention real fast before we get into the video that I love each and every one of you all, but uh, we're trying to push for 100K subs this year. And if you are not subbed to the channel, which about half of uh, our viewers aren't, which is a okay. Uh, there's no requirement to do so. If you will, if you would maybe consider possibly doing so in the push to 100k, or uh, wouldn't mind maybe possibly considering it, I would love you even more, which is almost impossible, but maybe not uh, eternally. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's jump right on into it. Now, quickly before we get into the actual like spec trees here and break down for each you know spec and build and all that, we'll have links to all that down below in the description as well as on the website. Obviously, I want to talk about the Warlock class tree. The class tree has a decent bit of like utility talents and things like banish and even like you know horrify to cause you know mobs that you fear tremble in place. But unfortunately, it doesn't really have the available talent points to get these utility options in M plus things like demon skin, fell armor, uh, technique, guile soul link synergy and these also costing two points to get these in some sense make it to the warlock clash tree is very set in stone when it comes to just the generic talent choices you can take now some players do opt to grab swift artifice more in a raid setting i've seen some playing it in m plus and they pull a point out of fell dom to put it in there but for the most part this is typically what you're going to get the downside you know you've got some utility I mean, some utility and things like shadow fury uh, if you want artifice you can get it somewhere a soul burn is nice uh you have pact of gluttony which is very strong for you the warlock having one minute health stones the cool thing though about the warlock clash tree and warlock in general we have a lot of defensives we are very tanky which is actually also a great segue into today's sponsor of the video nordvpn now when it comes to internet defense defensives let's be honest here we're all warlocks we've all popped and they resolve and dark pact in game there's no reason to not have some kind of internet based offensives IRL, especially in this day and age, a VPN. NordVPN. Not only are they the number one most popular VPN in the world, it's the VPN that I have used for a very long time, and I can say it has been actually just incredible. Now, whether it's a protection from malware, phishing scams, unwanted ads, DDoS protection, their password manager, if you want to use that, dark web monitoring, and obviously the option to just VPN in from anywhere in the world, NordVPN has you covered. You can use either the on desktop extension to connect directly whenever you you know, begin your gaming session or whatever you're doing online, or even the quick extension in your actual browser things like stopping web rtc leaks threat protection warnings location spoofing so on and so forth is incredibly customizable and incredibly easy to use now if you'd like you can use my code kalamazi vpn or the link below directly nordvpn.com slash kalamazi vpn for an exclusive deal right now now, when it comes to looking at different talent builds for Warlocks and M+, we're going to look at two versions of AF here, one Soul Harvester, one Hellcaller, Demo, and then Destro. If there's variance between the talent builds, like, you know, here talent-wise, we'll talk about it. I will say you're going to find variance in talent builds for Demo and Destro, regardless, in the actual class spec trees here. Uh, some, when it comes to AF, people play different builds. Not every build here is listed is going to be played in every single key. There's not one set it and forget it build. There's a decent bit for Destro, some for Demo, more than one or two, and a couple for AF talent-wise, but AF is the most consistent, I would say, across the board when it comes to uh, basically, you know, playing similar builds. So when you're looking at AF, Soul Harvester and Hellcaller is the two hero talents here you can play for Affliction. There's about an even split of Hellcaller versus Soul Harvester and M plus being played. Soul Harvester has the capstone here in Shadow of Death. Whenever you cast Soul Rot, you get three Soul Shards that are empowered by a demonic soul. Uh, soul Harvester is more Rapture damage based comparatively to Hellcaller being more Wither dot damage based. Wither, wither, wither replaces your corruption. Uh, you put it up, it just does big damage. Uh, it's enhanced by a lot of effects in the tree here. And Malevolence is your capstone for Hellcaller, which is a minute cooldown. You have a haste amp, gives Wither more stacks, more damage, and just a strong amp to your dots essentially and a shorter cooldown or a short cd based cooldown right but looking at soul harvester here in the actual spec tree 
So you're playing Vile Taint to mass apply your agonies, Summoner's Embrace, Drainsel here, uh, Haunt, Improved Haunt, no point in Sacrilash, but you are playing Dark Lair, Malefic Visionary, a point in Contagion, two points in Call of the Week, Crescendo, Improved Malefic Rapture, Malefic Touch, a point in Withering Bolt, Soul, uh, Soul Rot, Malign Omen to give more dot duration whenever you Rapture after casting your Soul Rot, Dark Harvest, and then Creeping Death into Malignancy into Death's Embrace. I've seen some pull a point out of Embrace and put it in Rattus Afflictions here, not a huge fan of it personally. I feel like you have enough Nightfall procs regardless from Soul Harvester. The tree is based around a good bit. Whenever you cast Haunt, you get a Nightfall effect basically every time. I mean, this is every time based on talent right here. Um, and basically, I think this is a little better. Just play Death Embrace here or Soul Harvester. Uh, I'll have links to a handful of builds down below if you want them, but this is be one of them down there. Now, when it comes to Hellcaller, things do change a little bit for Affliction. Uh, I want to point out one thing here. There are some players playing Shadow Bolt or Improved Shadow Bolt over Drain Soul in M Plus builds. Improved Shadow Bolt is better than Drain Soul when it comes to single target for Hellcaller. And just in general, uh, I mean, if, if, he, if you play Improved Shadow Bolt, it does help dump Nightfall procs as well, which is also nice. Uh, a bit less drain time out there, you, you know, even though Hellcaller is not as much Nightfall base as Soul Harvester. But y you lose the effect of casting Drain Soul on a mob and getting a shard when it dies. I played a bit of both. I think I lean more towards Drain Soul still at this point, but both are fine. Personal preference, whatever you want. You'll see both being played and a plethora of settings you know, around M+. Besides that, still playing Vile Taint. You're playing Haunt. No improved Haunt here. You're playing a point in Sacrilash. Two points in Malediction. One in Contagion for big dot damage amps here, which once again, Wither, big dot. Uh, two points in Call of the Week. Crescendo, improved Rapture, hit Malef uh, Malefic Touch. Full soul rot damage amps and amps again here. Creeping death, malignancy, and no death's embrace. Extra points being spent up here, two malediction, and you know, one in sacrilash, depending how you want to look at it. Now, once again, AF is pretty static across the board. Not a whole lot of variance in builds here. Uh, Hellcaller doesn't have the shard gen. You know, whenever you cast soul rot and see if the player shards, it'd be closer to a chest, but Hellcaller does have malediction or ma malevolence, which gives you that solid one minute damage amp. Very strong, very fun. We're seeing a mix of both currently in M+. And when it comes to Demonology, you really just see Diabolus. You don't see Soul Harvester anywhere. But the cool thing is that if you did see Soul Harvester, the build would be basically the same. Not a whole lot really changes here for Demonology when it comes to M+, in the builds. There are some, there is some variance in builds, but I think this here is likely the best general build. There was mention of a guillotine build about a week ago. It was bugged, over simming. So back to this. That's okay. Now, uh, you are playing Implosion, Big Stack Cleave Profile, obviously Implosion, Dogs, Dreadlash, Demonic Strength. You're playing Wicked Maw now into Grim War. Uh, Rune of Shadows, a lot of just passive amps here, Anilian Training, Tyrant, being a minute, Demonic Consumption. The big thing here with this tree is you see some players not playing Pact of the Mother and Umbra Blaze. Pact is great. Blaze sucks in M+. You see players playing a build like this a decent bit. Shadow Invocation and Fell Sunder, which does seem a little higher in AoE. That's a bit of variance there in some builds you'll see, but it's not as strong in single target and it's not much higher in AoE. Uh, more players have begun to shift back to a build like this, which I think is better. Just playing that consist or that more, the stronger single target profile and on the high end, if you roll packed, like multiple packs, you know, rocks back to back, you can high roll. You can't really low roll. It's a basic like, hey, it's going to proc or it's not. You're not like, you know, losing raw imps and have you cast things and pack doesn't proc, right? So and it's in general. Uh, it's solid all around. Pack is good. I wish Umbra was different, but it is what it is. Uh, now, when it comes to this row here, I have seen some shift to playing Dread Calling. I'm still playing in Torin. They're both pretty close, honestly. In Sims, I've seen one being ahead of the other, uh, so on and so forth. I'm still playing in Nilium, but it's very, or sorry, in Torin, but it's very close between the two. Heading down a bit more here. Time Master's Gambit, increasing dog damage. You're playing Foulmouth, you're playing Shadow uh, Shadow Touched, and you're playing the Red Dog Fahard. He will pulse fire damage whenever he's active. Uh, besides that, you're playing Doom into Impending Doom and Pact of the Erid Ruin, which can summon a Doom Guard. He will volley, well, he will not volley, he will cast single target Doom Bolt. He does not volley anymore, but he is there doing that. As far as Diabolus is concerned, you have things like Cloven Souls, Six of the Coven. Uh, it's basically just big demons. Uh, you'll spawn a pit lord in, spawn a mother of chaos, a big mommy. Uh, you'll spawn in an overlord, which just cleave mobs down and also empower your effects. Ruination, massive meteor, huge AoE. Uh, big mommy gives you an infernal bolt, which gives you three shards. 
And if you cast it, uh, Overlord empowers your pets. So just strong across the board. Uh, the pets are consistent now. There's no like weird rotation of them changing. Like it used to be with bugged. Just solid. It's it, it's demo feels like demo how it did in Dragonflight. But but demons you can summon with Diabolus are really cool thematically and it's just a lot of fun to play. Very consistent. If you do play Soul Harvester, nobody really is, but the build says basically you know the same. When it comes to Destro here, so. You really don't see any more Diabolos. It was nerfed. Hellcaller was buffed. Uh, Wither, just like Affliction, is very strong here. Still playing, you know, Malevolence. Obviously have Malevolence, have Wither. Uh, the builds you play for Destro vary. So this is probably like, I'd probably say this right here is like the general, like best, just universal build. If you're like running average cheese, pugging, doing whatever. Um, this is playing a point in Burn to Ashes, a point in Fire and Brimstone. Burn does affect incinerate it also gives a more, bit more single target damage at the same time some opt to play a point up here in pyrogenics uh some opt to play havoc over mayhem in certain keys like siege just in general but mayhem is there uh some also opt to play if you want to play things like soul fire they opt to play uh no points in chaos incarnate i believe they also pull a point at pyrogenics they do and they go like this you have soul fire alongside fire and brimstone incinerates can cleave reset soul fire quite often cdf uh so on and so forth and a lot of different play in these builds here now there are also a few builds out there that play both cdf and shadow burn i believe i believe those builds are structured just just about uh i believe they're structured like this roughly uh, most of them aren't playing fire and brimstone some do find a way to work it in I think they don't play a point in PO, I believe, but there's a lot of variance in these builds. You've seen a bit of a shift away from Shadow Burn sort of recently. Uh, there also is a bit of play in Conflagration uh, in these builds as well. You've seen a bit of a shift away from Shadow Burn uh, recently. Just, I mean, Destro excels in heavy, like, mass AoE. It's fine when it comes to, like, mid tier pulls, but it's not like it's going to be insane. If you're, like, pulling one pack at a time in a pug, Honestly, Demonology is very often your better choice unless you need like Imputility and Pet Dispels and all of that. So there's a lot of variance in Destro builds you'll see out there. But like I said, if you're looking to start with one general Destro build, like a generic one in M+, it's fine at Cleave, can do big AoE if you're pulling big. It's also fine in single target. I would likely start here. Once again, you'll see a lot of variance in these builds because there's just so many options you can play for destruction. All right, now when it comes to rotational things, we're gonna look at Affliction, Demonology, and Destruction here, maybe in that order, I don't know exactly, but Aff is up first here. Now we're gonna look at basically like the general AOE opener at M+. Uh, my website, kalamazi.gg, has you know a text guide to all the rotations in single target and AOE, as well as I have videos out for 11.0 that will cover the single target rotation a little more in depth. Typically, it's relatively similar. Uh, you're just casting things in single target, like for Destro comparatively, Chaos Bolts, Tyrannic Fire, uh, so on and so forth for each spec respectively. But if you want a more in-depth breakdown of every little bit for single target and AoE, I would encourage you to check the website or those videos because I want to keep this video under a long time now i have also added a tracker above my damage meter here which will show you what spells i'm casting in order i'm also going to talk you through it here so we can you know try and break this down the best way possible without throwing a bunch of text on my screen so uh, if you're playing affliction here now i am playing soul harvester currently which means i'm going to be casting soul rot and getting three shards uh via shadow of death if you opt to play Hellcaller, keep in mind wither replaces your corruption but seed of corruption will apply uh wither or corruption regardless whatever whatever spec you're playing and it is permanent via absolute corruption uh Hellcaller has minute malevolence so basically you'll pop malevolence after your dark lair and your opener uh you know apparently the soul harvester just getting shards after you cast your soul rot and things and we'll go from there now Getting into it here. So we'll talk you through both the openers here. And once again, turn us down. This mage is going wild here for some reason. It shouldn't vary a crazy amount. And once you get it down, honestly, it's pretty simple. Once again, the big thing between Soul Harvester and Hellcaller here is that Hellcaller will not get shards whenever you cast your Soul Rot. Soul Harvester will, which makes quality of life better, ease of play a bit better, and all that. You can also just, you know, watch your shard play a little more with Hellcaller, and it should even out pretty well, but you know. Either way, whatever you prefer. Both are seeing a decent bit of play in M plus right now. So when it comes to the affliction opener, say the tank's running into a pack, he's rounding all the mobs up and stuff like that. We're going to precast a seed of corruption. Let's say if there's a prior mob in here, say, say it's this one right here. We're going to precast seed of corruption into an unstable affliction. It should hit when the, the pack is pulled basically. Cast my haunt. When you cast a vile taint, 
cast a soul rod all you can see right there we're gonna go dark glare trinkets potions whatever if you're hell you pop malevolence there and begin spamming malefic rapture now you can see all the dots initially getting extended there by a little bit due to malign omen our talent that extends the first the, the dots after your first your rapture cast whenever you soul rot and for this for the most part here we're watching our procs here trying to dump nightfalls if we can uh Thoughts are glowing here, so we're going to refresh Unstable Affliction and try and refresh these Agonies all manually before they fall. Now, if you'd like your Plater profile to glow like this, my profile is in my Wago, link down below. We're going to cast Vital Tank right here to refresh Agonies, cast Haunt again, and then a bit of a damage window here. You can Rapture a little bit as well. Try and keep dumping these Nightfall procs if you can. We got a proc there, which is Crescendo. It's Instant Cast Rapture. There you go. And for the most part, it's basically it. Uh, you can see basically every other Vital Tank, which is right here. Will line up with your soul rot half minute versus a minute now the annoying part about as ah, you can see right here all my agonies are falling they're all gone Vile tank is up in three seconds so that is one of the downsides of playing aff and plus the quality of life is just basically non-existent when it comes to dot maintenance you have to go through and manually refresh every single agony or a certain number of them in between each vile tank gas you've been asking for a vile tank to become a shorter cooldown or or likely extend the duration of Agony if it's cast by Vile Taint for a long time now. Maybe it'll happen at some point, but if you're looking at playing AF, uh, you have to keep in mind, you're going to be refreshing those Agonies between every Vile Taint cast, you know, basically every 20-ish seconds. Every minute, you're going to have your Vile Taint and your Soul Rot. Every two minutes, you're going to have, you know, Vile Taint and Soul Rot and Dark Lair. If you're playing Soul Harvester, obviously, you know, you're not popping Malevolence. But if you're playing Hellcaller, you will indeed have a level to pop. Now, when it comes to playing Destruction in M+, and say you're heading into the trash pack here as well, uh, this is the build I'm playing here, like I said, probably the most, probably this, like, what I would suggest overall for it's, like, pugging average cheese and just playing Desher for the first few times and all that. Uh, you're gonna have Cleave via Fire and Brimstone, which cleaves all your incinerates. You're gonna have Burn to Ashes buffing them. Once again, there are a lot of builds of Destro. If the build is indeed playing Soul Fire, you're basically just gonna cast Soul Fire whenever it glows at you. Uh, if you're playing things like, you know, Pyrogenics, you're gonna do the same thing here pretty much for the most part regardless. Uh, it really doesn't change a whole lot unless you're playing talents like soul fire or shadow burn if you're playing shadow burn you can cast it obviously in single target you're going to want to do that you can cast it on low health mobs to snipe them when they're low and just in general it adds a bit of prio damage to trash packs as well you're not going to cast as many random fires playing shadow burn if you want uh, but for the most part you know shadow burn offers a bit of like prio cleave single target damage and you'll cast it a good bit on trash packs as well but we've seen a bit of builds shifting away from playing shadow burn at least like in a handful of settings once again if you want like a super in-depth breakdown or i guess more so on the web you can check the website uh, for more breakdowns more builds so on and so forth there are a lot of variations of dashro currently in m plus let's say you're playing this build here the base of this build the same pretty much everywhere you're playing cataclysm cdf being channel demon fire obviously random fire you're playing hellcaller which is wither wither replaces immolate so Cataclysm will apply Wither whenever it goes on to, whenever it pops, whenever mob you're hitting. Cataclysm is not target capped. So if you hit one mob with the Cata, it'll apply one Cata. If you hit one billion mobs with that Cata, it's going to apply Wither to all of them. It's not target capped. The application is not, right? The damage is not incredibly impactful for Cataclysm, but the actual application effect of Wither is. We wish Aff would have that on a shorter cooldown, but, you know, so... Uh, it is what it is. You're going to have Malevolence being your, your one minute cooldown here. Infernal is two, so you're going to pop Malevolence basically every minute or so with Infernal, without Infernal, with Infernal, without Infernal, and go from there. Now, you are playing Reign of Chaos here as well, which is whenever you spend Soul Shards, you get a chance to proc an Infernal, uh, which can spawns for eight seconds and snowballs a bit. There really is not a whole lot of play for Diabolus now due to the nerfs and all that and the changes to Ritual, so we're going to look at Hellcaller here. So let's say we're heading into a pack. Not as much ramp up time here and things as aff. You're just going to head in. So the tank's pulling the pack and stuff. We're going to cast a Cataclysm into an Infernal. Typically, I'll throw a random fire real fast. Malevolence for to make all these withers get stacks and flare up here. Hit CDF to extend them all. There's more duration there. Random fire, conflict rate, cast an incinerate. Random fire, we're in five targets here. Mother incinerate or two. Random fire, incinerate, random fire, random fire. Got a mayhem proc there so we can conflagrate for double charge off of conflagration. Rain of Fire, Rain of Fire. Withers are falling here. If we hit CDF, it will extend them again. Extension there. And now you can cast Cataclysm again. 
to fully reapply all those withers. And besides that, just casting random fire in five targets here, getting some procs, spawning in our overfiend here. Uh, you can use, obviously, weave in incinerates, which do cleave once again from fire and brimstone. More random fires. Mayhem will proc just randomly when it does. If you're playing a soul fire build, you can obviously cleave two soul fires. It will give two shards. Baseline soul fire gives one. It also procs if you're playing shadow burn. It'll cleave both shadow burns. It'll cleave basically anything you can for Destro. I won't cleave CDF like direct spells. It'll cleave. Immolate. Conflagrate. Wither. Uh, Chaos Bolt. It will cleave them all. You know. So that's the gist of Destro and AoE. We pop our, once again, malevolence every minute here. Going into a pack. It's just Kata. Once again, if you're going into it, Malevolence, uh, throw a random fire, depending on your shard count, CDF to extend them all. And that's basically it. And if you look at the breakdown here, Wither is a large portion of our damage. Black and Soul is part of Wither. It's the stacks you gain on Wither, which you're taking down here, which whenever you pop Malevolence, it grants Wither multiple stacks. So those stacks do begin to come down. Uh, they, they tick down essentially doing more damage. So Wither and Black and Soul are a large portion of your damage. Maybe a little skewed here because we're in, in and out of combat, but Wither does a lot of damage. And the fact you can keep it permanently applied with Cataclysm and then casting Channel Demon Fire to extend them is very strong. We wish Ath had that amount of quality of life, but regardless, it's very fun to play, very smooth, very fluent, and honestly hitting Malevolence like a baby Dark Soul feels really good. Now, finally, we have Demonology and AoE M plus and all that. Demonology is a bit more in a decent bit more in depth than it may seem when it comes to M plus. And a lot of that is due to how you end a pack versus approach a pack. Now imps don't expire. Imps last a long time outside of combat. And if you're able to carry, let's say, six, eight, ten, twelve imps from the end of one pack to the next pack, then when you get in combat, just say, okay, I'm gonna cast Dreadstalkers or like you know, a vile fiend dreadstalkers and right into a tyrant and have those 10 imps already alive from their previous pack you can bring a lot of just really strong burst off the bat as demonology via your tyrant with 12 imps out with a you know with a charhound out with a pack of dogs out right uh, at the same time you have demonic core management via things like dogs expiring always giving you two demonic cores and casting power siphon to at times if you're out of combat and they're going to expire cast this to extend the current you know like stacks you have which might expire duration wise casting siphon will indeed extend those so if you have two and they're going to expire you cast siphon you'll then have four with a full duration of 20 seconds now on top of all that You've got Doom the Talent, which is basically our tier bonus from S3 and S4 of Dragonflight, where you're going to want to spread Dooms around, which you do by casting Demonic Core procs, Instant Cast Demon Bolts on targets. Uh, whenever they pop, they do damage. It is smart. If a mob dies early, it'll just pop regardless on the other mobs. And they have a chance to spawn in a Doom Guard, which will do single target damage, a bit of prior damage, and all that. But... Even if you don't play Demonology to like as high of a level as you know others are like might be by weaving in dooms and micromanaging pets from one pack to the next and all that, I would encourage you to do so and watch videos and playthroughs of Demonology and stuff. But even initially, just playing Demonology by casting dogs in a Charhound and hitting demonic strength and basic pet stuff, Demonology is still very strong at a baseline level, but it gets even stronger at a higher level of play. That makes sense. Most specs do. But Demo is like buried entry. It's like not try to be high it's pretty easy and the damage is pretty good regardless so now we're gonna say we're not heading into a pack here with imps out we're just going into a dungeon whatever um we're gonna have like two imps out or whatever no big deal so let's say we're heading into a pack i'm gonna siphon here to have some demonic course make it a little easier on me usually you'll have some laying around i'm gonna wait for this to expire and spawn a new one and then we'll go into it once again rotation tracker over here if you want i'll talk you through it as well now for simplicity's sake let's say we're heading into a pack here usually you'll have a handful of imps out following you around uh that we don't hear it's whatever. I'm going to siphon in about 10 seconds here once this comes off cooldown to get my two demonic cores. Typically, you'll have some heading into a pack, right? And then we're going to set up a basic tyrant and talk through the pet cast, of, you know, in between tyrants and all that. But tyrant is a minute cooldown. One important thing to keep in mind, tyrant's a minute. Charhound is half a minute. Now, you can cast Charhound outside of combat if you're running from one pack to the next to get him on cooldown. But if you miss a cast of Charhound every 30 seconds, and it's like, it's like a decent bit behind... It's usually worth to hold it just to put it with your next Tyrant. It's very awkward cooldown wise. I hope they make it shorter next patch, but for now, it is what it is. So let's say we're heading into a pack. I'm going to have some cores here, whatever. Uh, tanks pulling the pack. I'm going to cast a Shadow Bolt into a Grim War Felguard. He runs in. He's going to Soul Strike for a Shard there. Shadow Bolt. Going to cast Charhound. Going to Shadow Bolt again. 
Cast some Dreadstalkers here. We got an instant cast proc. Good there. And a Gul'dan Demon Bolt. Go here. And a Gul'dan Demon Bolt. And I'll Tyrant here. And then we're going to cast Demonic Strength. Now, my pets were about to expire there. I don't have any haste here, whatever. So I opted to cast a Tyrant early. I might have been able to get one more hand in. We want to get as many imps as possible to a Tyrant. Big thing here, he extends all your imps. This Weak War shows they're expiring about now. I'm going to implode them all. Weak War will freeze their energy in a sense and show them in like a gray, like grayed out state there when they're extended by your Tyrant. When they're not, though, they'll start having this color on them again. Orange means we have two casts left. This means we have, you know, four casts, six casts, so on and so forth. And we're going to go from there. Uh, now, when it comes to imploding, Mythic Plus, implosion is a DPS gain in two or more stack targets. Typically, you're going to build, I'd say usually a minimum of six imps, six plus by casting a handful, of, like, you know, Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolts, Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolts, all that. I have, for example, I have about 10 here. Now I'm going to implode. The big thing, you can... Try to build as many as possible. I mean, you want to try and build as many as possible before the first set expires. Because if they expire, I mean, you're not getting to implode them and you're losing some AOE damage. So, for example, here I have 15. I'm going to implode now because those are getting close to expiring. Now, besides that, uh, when it comes to playing Demo and Plus, you're going to hit Demonic Strength basically on a cooldown. Typically, it should be right around your Tyrant cast because they're both a minute long. Uh, and you're just going to go from there. Now, once again, very important to spread Dooms here. Like if you're casting hand gold dance and demon bolts and stuff, uh, casting pets, doing whatever, you want to make sure that you're applying your demon bolts to these targets here, right? Ones that don't already have doom on them. Because there's no like, if I put doom on this target here and hit it again, it's not going to reapply. It's not going to spread it anywhere. It just wastes a demon bolt basically. So you want to make sure you're like tab targeting, spreading the dooms around so you have multiple dooms popping at once. Because when you have multiple cores out, if I go like this, for example, let's say I do like this one, two, uh, three. Uh, and I go here, or bolt here, right? All the cores get reduced, watch this. They all get reduced, and it also applies from here. So you're reducing multiple dooms at the same time by applying dooms to a new target, or just casting new demon bolts in general. But the more dooms you have out, obviously they all, they all reduce at the same time. So there's that, it's very strong. Now, outside of that, uh, going back into like an opener here or whatever, casting a Grimoire and stuff, demonology is, relatively simplistic when it comes to like in tyrant or in combat tyrants right you're gonna cast you know a grimoire if we have it a charhound uh, a set of dogs dread stalkers and a, a handful of handy lands into your tyrant you want to catch your pets where they expire which you know, i did right there barely and then catch your demonic strength you're gonna have demons spawning in like the pit lord right there which empowers abilities like ruination which comes down a big meteor uh and you're gonna be just basically you know casting spells and they'll passively come in by consuming shards um now when you're casting tyrants and setting them up in combat, I guess I right here. This Charhound, half a minute cooldown, this is a minute. It just came off CD. If I'm running from one pack to the next, I say I'm going to hold this Charhound until the next pack so I'm not in combat or anything, or even just in general, if you just forget to hit it or whatever for whatever reason, and I look down, I'm like, oh, I have Charhound now. Oh, well, let's hit it. You can do that, but look at your tyrant. It's at 20 seconds. And... You also want to cast Charhound before Tyrant to prep for that ramp, right? So it almost like it pushes your Tyrant back a bit because Tyrant extends all your active pets. And doing that means like, oh, I can Tyrant in six seconds here. I should start ramping now, but I can't. It's my dog's on cooldown. So quite often, if you just miss the dog cast, if you just didn't see it or whatever, just hold it for your next Tyrant. It isn't the end of the world, um, but it makes life easier to like not desync cooldowns and keep them all in line if possible because Tyrant is a minute cooldown. And Charhound is half a minute. Uh, it's going to go basically big tyrant, small tyrant. So you're going to have, you know, big tyrant being with a Grimoire in it. Two minute cooldown. Next tyrant smaller because you're not going to have a Grimoire up. One minute cooldown versus two. So let's say we're in combat here. Uh, we don't have like a Grimoire up. We're going to cast Charhound. Uh, going to cast the five shards. Dreadstalkers. Demon Bolt. Hand of Gul'dan. Demon Bolt. Hand of Gul'dan. Radiation comes in here so we can cast two. And just go into a tyrant. Same thing. Same thing. You got a handful of imps in there, a set of Dreadstalkers, a Charhound, and all that. Just minus the Grimoire. And I know in about a minute from now, I'll oh, hit your strength there. I know about a minute from now, I'm going to have a Tyrant again, but I can put a Grimoire in there with the Dreadstalkers, with the Charhound, and all that. Also, imps are going to expire. Load here. There you go. You can implode during your Tyrant if you want. Uh, in like mass AoE, it is a loss when it comes to like cryo damage and all that and just damage in general but like in mass mass aoe if there's 10 mobs i'm imploding man 
it's it's very close regardless sort of up to you that's basically it i might make a video down the line on more like advanced demonology tips for like m plus play rotational play saving procs extending cores using demons to your advantage all that kind of stuff but for now this is a great starting place and the website as well Monster.gg will have links or i guess text guides to all this as well as my 11.0 guides on youtube if you want them cover all that in single target a bit more if you want as well so thanks for watching guys it wraps it up and hopefully the video helped clarify on some questions or builds or rotations or whatever you might have been curious about for whatever spec of warlock you want to play in patch 11.05 and basically 11.07 uh now i would venture to guess that we're probably about a a few weeks away, it could even be closer to 11.1 PTR, but I also venture to guess we're not getting 11.1 on retail until probably end of February, March, give or take, with the holidays being a thing, uh, without having PTR at this point yet and all that, but eh, we'll see where it goes. Like I talked about, Warlock is not like on the high, high end of M+, like meta classes, but Destro in the high end can bring a large amount of AoE. And when it comes to pugging, Demonology is very, very strong, as long as you don't need like some imp value or pet value outside of your, you know, guard and honestly like affliction might not be like the strongest but it's not the disparity that we saw in dragonflight where it was like you know demo destro and the af is way down here they're all pretty close i think is the worst overall but it's not like it's unplayable it's never unplayable but you know you get what i'm saying so uh, if you guys want any weak wars or add-ons links to twitch discord the website down below as well as up here i believe uh at the same time like always, a huge thank you and shout out to my patrons for all supporting Patreon. Uh, like always, guys, thank you so much for all support. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. It allows me to keep doing what I'm doing for y'all and making videos and just everything. Uh, I greatly appreciate it, guys. Uh, if you look at supporting Patreon, it should be linked. Well, there is a link up here. It's down below in the description. I've enjoyed playing every spec of Warlock when it comes to patch 11.0. I think that Warlock is in a relatively fun state right now. A, a pretty fun state. I think this is probably the best version of like Malefic Rapture based affliction we've seen probably ever i'm not saying i wouldn't mind having ua spender back a bit as well in certain areas uh demonology is fun a couple of things are a little clunky with like valphine cast times and all that we talked about it in the Felix videos a few weeks ago Let's see where that goes in 11.1 and destro i mean honestly with inferno being changed and not giving like shard value when brain does damage like it did in dragonflight it still feels pretty similar hellcaller shard gen random fire spam and honestly it's customizable you can play multiple builds so the uh world is your oyster whatever the saying is i don't know i don't need them but yeah thanks for watching guys i'll catch you all again soon on stream peace